Well, hello and welcome to Jumadism Total Notary Channel, my ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are back at building a battleship, and uh, that was me. We are going to build a battleship. And this time I have already installed these turrets. I decided to go for these, um, but with some testing, I kind of realized that these are just too close to each other. And they actually have a problem of shooting each other in their backs. Um, so I exchanged the front and the back most turret with the cheapest one, just to have something interesting there. Because this is so close to the kind of side of the vehicle, so if we get some explosion there, and you know, especially kind of down here, uh, there is a distance for the explosions to go, but then there is just a single layer there. And they'll get pop popped off, uh, popped off. Not too. Uh, it's not too hard to like popping off. But basically, this entire layer with turrets on the outside right here is actually also kind of a first layer of defense. Like this, this layer will get destroyed. And the same kind of goes for this turret here. You know, uh, this is the AA turret, but I. This is the best prefab stuff going on that I have not prefab what am I saying this is the best uh, like setup of the turrets that I made it's the most efficient uh, uh, Tetris going on there but it only has one barrel but it works kind of well uh, too so it's no issue but I made a more armored version this is actually a 5x5 five five turret because I made it have some internal armor so these are on the edges yeah you can see that they they can take a little more beating than the other ones just because of the fact that it has internal armor it's also surrounded by one meter metal uh, just like the other ones but when we blow that off there is still a tiny little bit of armor so it probably requires another explosion there to actually destroy something but that's basically that um, this is a layer of stone and uh, metal. Oh no. I just realized I messed up a little bit here. Uh, I accidentally exchanged the stone I had on this build for metal, which completely destroys things. So I'll need to revert back to an earlier. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. I just recently filled this in though. Darn, that's kind of an issue. This is what I. This is like the earlier save that I found, uh, and the stone parts matter in terms of. Uh, uh, it's just a little bit cost bit too, but it's more EMP bit, so I'll really have to work with this one. Um, yeah, I'll have to have both spawned in and just. Uh, I think we'll put on the colors lastly, to be honest. Um, but anyways, we can explain a little bit more here. I just had a presence of mind to understand that I did paint all the... Uh, I did paint all the stone blocks uh, black, um, but then I replaced them to metal, so all black metal could be replaced back to stone. So we don't need to do a lot of things to save this. Um, it just works. Um, I'm thinking a little bit of what type of armor I have set up um, because you have maybe have seen our instant tutorials and in those we do talk about some graphs and some calculations that was uh, has been made by Jono um, 1928 uh, from our uh, land tournament, the winner of our land tournament uh, and it's basically so that this metal wood checkerboard pattern um, has the best values per material there is um, and of course that's it that's it that's some theoretical um, calculations but theoretically the armor boost that the metal gets from the wood and the wood gets from the metal is really good in terms of efficiency per uh, material so this should be theoretically the best most cost-efficient armor there is um, and of course they only stack two blocks nowadays but uh, 
these calculations are indeed based on uh, the two block principle as well. So if I'm going to explain it a little bit quickly, <clears throat> when I made the instant tutorial, the part two uh, about armor composites, uh, the changes that only two layers of armor stack uh, was already made. So it is fresh information still, but basically like this, one layer of uh, metal on one layer of wood is better than two layers of reinforced decking. So if we just go into, I don't know, just our character here, find these blocks which are here apparently, great. And we go to the armor class tool here. You can see reinforced wood. From the side it has 24. Uh, we need to teleport here by the way. Okay, thank you. So it has 24, right? and the wood has eight and the metal has uh, 40. If we look from this angle, the armor class is 28 because it was 24, uh, but since they kind of stack up like this, it's 28, right? And this one has 41.6 because it's backed by wood and this wood has 16. So it has eight, you see, it's like eight turns to 16 and 40 turns to 41.6 and this one is just 28. So if you just uh, plus that together and divide and stuff and you'll kind of get the numbers. And that's the reason behind it. Uh, that means however that a layer of metal and wood is basically kind of like two meters, it's, it's like a better version of two meters of reinforced decking. Uh, one meter of metal and one meter of wood is not equivalent to um, like two meters of metal. No, of course not. This is basically a pimped layer of one sheet of metal. So having this four block thing here can basically be seen as a replacement for a two meter um, metal armor. And that's kind of the stuff behind it. So if we just do some quick testings here, and of course only two of the layers actually stack, so it takes more time to get through, but here is the line when it starts uh, to be through. Here we have two meters of metal, just like that. Uh, now we need to make this explosion a tad bit more, uh, there we go, strong I believe. Let's set it to 50,000 or something. You can see, boom. Boom, another one. Now the explosion is completely through. Here we go here. Boom. Alright. We got kind of ish two layers in. Boom. Okay. We got kind of through, but uh, it's more intact than this was. And you see this inner sheet here is more compact. Um, and, you know, one of the things with having big bulk is that we take the explosions further away from... Uh, um, yeah, if the shale explodes on the surface, it's further away from the important bits inside that could have been destroyed in this scenario. And of course, adding more wood like that is an added cost, but um, it is cheap for what it does. And it's also very good against uh, kinetic shells because uh, wood does have a lot of cheap health points. You know, they have... I mean, they have low health point, and they certainly have low armor class, but wood does have a lot of health compared to how much it costs. This is like 16,000 um, health for 20 materials. And if you go to wood, it's like the half that um, health but for only four material cost. So they're really good at absorbing kinetic damage too. So the uh, these turrets are obviously too expensive, so I added three of them here to the sides so that they can actually shoot the enemy in front of it when it's approaching. Uh, since they are on the outer edge, they are not likely to survive a lot longer either, so it's best that these cannons actually can shoot from the start. And while they might meet in some problems with uh, like where they can actually like fire, if we are decently far away, 
it should be no problem. So I'm actually going to remove these turrets here. Um, we can we can actually do a quick like test. We'll just save this thing, and we'll just gonna remove that thing. And I'm just gonna send in a crossbones here for you, so you can kind of see the issue. We're not in god mode. Now oh, let's see here. Now it has... Oh, the detection is super poor by the way, so I should probably... I should probably go here. Yep, where I can control them myself. And now, oh yeah, now it will override a failsafe, right? It will definitely. But uh, nevertheless, they'll do this sometime, you know. They'll kind of shoot and they'll just miss. The, the fail safe just won't work. And since we'll have a kind of superstructure here in the middle a little bit, and some bigger turrets going up, of course, um, these will really be kind of auxiliary turrets that just don't make much sense. But anyways, I want to check that these three turrets have... Okay, yeah, all right. I should probably set up a movement. Oh, or possibly. Yeah, I don't know if they need to rotate. I possi possibly just set up some uh, movement limitations later so we don't get problems from this. But yeah, here you can see when we face someone forwards. Uh, <laughs> They all just stick into each other like that, and it's just absolutely horrible. Yeah, anyways. And I I, I bet that kind of uh, destroyed most of the turret. I think it did. What's happening with the crossbones, though? It's uh, down to 95, and you can see it does just huge damage to us, because we haven't set up much yet. Anyways, we shall continue. It's a new day, it's a new life, and I'm feeling shit. Not not quite right. But anyways, uh, I didn't finish the re recording in one day as I intended to. Um, I needed to fix some other stuff, so now we're back here. And you can see I've been working. I have been working. So, I removed <clears throat> many of the turrets like that. I set up some delays and I made them look in this amazing cool angle here. Can you see this? It looks cool. And we have mortars here. <clears throat> yes, my my disposable extra armament will be a line of mortars. These are not heavily armored at all. They do have some basic armor, so they cannot be taken out with really light arms, but they will be able to deal some damage, and they also absorb lots of damage. So there we are. <clears throat> Uh, anyways, uh, let me show you a little bit here. Here you can see I've set up some uh, wood extra stuff in case of we have some deep penetrating uh, hash heat secondary whatever shells like that. We have something to counter it with. Um, I've set up era armor um, in this checkerboard pattern with metal beams. Um, this is apparently the shit uh, right now. Um, I've seen many people do it, um, but I have also been recommended to do it a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, now I got recommended to do it very recently as well. And I think it was Reddit. I sorry if it wasn't Reddit and you know who you... And if you are watching who, said, who told me this like a week ago, you know who you are. Uh, Reveal yourself in the comments field. In any case, um, I've added some stuff to this. Um, so here we have uh, my anti-missile systems. Um, these are set up here on like one on each side. Of course, I of course I will have more, but I just wanted to have you know uh, one of them at the outer side like that, so we can really reach lot lots of angles. And I'm I'm gonna have more of them. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to experiment with installing some anti-missile systems that are just installing the wall because that's more cheap but these boys are more accurate they're much more accurate uh, when they actually aim towards the incoming missiles it's uh, or crams the likability of them hitting is so much larger in any case 
Uh, down here I have my anti-torpedo uh, system and also anti-missile system because these has uh, secondary thrusters going on there and some confusing flares. So they are down here to shoot at some incoming torpedoes. This system costs like 5,000 and I'll have more of those. Uh, here we have a 100,000 cluster missile system inserted in here. So I wanted to have some cluster, missile, uh, cluster missiles indeed. And I added this in case they bounce. I haven't seen it happening yet since it's uh, deep going. But this I built for the old instant tutorial to bombers. I forgot I had it as a prefab and then I checked it out and I'm, I was like, well, this is kind of decent actually. This works. This is, uh, this is good. I can use it. I slapped it on here. And yeah, it's a, it's a remote guidance thing. I don't know if that works. I might switch it to laser guided. But laser guided is also a little bit vulnerable like that. So I don't know, we'll see. In any case, um, I added a little auxiliary missile system in the back here. So we kind of spread out the weapons. Here we have EMP, uh, surge protectors. If you go like this, by the way, we reached a cost of 600,000, so that's how expensive we are. And I have hidden inside these layers, so it has contact with the metal deck above. I have hidden a few of these surge protectors a little bit here and there, the big ones. And they should really absorb like the main damage. Here we can see some extra ones popping up there. And these are the 4 meter long variants, so they should be kind of strong boys. And I have actually been experimenting a little bit with APS, smaller APS. So I tried to make a diff gun and I kind of failed because the reloading time was like two minutes and that's just too long. Uh, so I kind of scrapped that and I built a single um, one out. I only have one outloader in this thing. It is, it's, a, it's like a single one autoloader, uh, five meter shell cannon, 500 millimeters. Uh, and if you want to know what a diff gun, it's direct input feeding. So we just had direct input, like you know, ammo inputs on the firing piece. Uh, and just, and we can fire big shells like that without having autoloaders. But it was just kind of bad. So I tried to make a small, uh, APS system. And this one costs like uh, six. Uh, no, it's like three thousand. It's like super cheap. Uh, so I tried this experimenting a little bit with that and see if it would be kind of worth it. And I, I haven't set up a good shell yet, to be honest. But um, you know, this is this is just some armor piercing. It likes penetrates half this block of solid metal, but uh, it shoots like every third every. 23 seconds or something like that so you can see in my armor it reaches a lot further and that's because well we're shooting from the wrong angle and you know we have the checkerboard pattern so it's more bulk this should be seen as like one two three four so it's more like to, it's more like an era checker board with one meter of metal uh, across it with, with some extra protection from uh, bulk and HP and stuff like that. Anyways, um, you know, the metal wood checker board pattern should be superior uh, when, when we're talking about math. If you want to know more about it, check my second instant tutorial with the armor. Uh, second armor instant tutorial. It's the follow-up of the first one. It's like two parts. It's the same tutorial. It's just divided up in two in two parts, and that goes through composite armors, as this is called, and their stats and their benefits, and uh, basically what Jono 1928 calculated on his uh, Excel and stuff like that, and came with some conclusions. Well, anyways, um. I don't know, what are your thoughts about anti-missile missiles in terms of them being on a turret or in or instead letting them be on, uh, for example, a, uh, I don't know, instead letting them be on like just, just the deck. I don't know. 
And also, uh, like, I, I couldn't make the direct input feeder, it just was so slow reloading, so I don't really know how I should set it up. Um, seems that 10 meter shells is the biggest shells we can have, by the way. Kind of interesting. I didn't know there was a limit, to be honest. Um, but that's kind of that. And I'm thinking a little bit about what type of system we should have. I was really impressed with the armor piercing EMP and the armor piercing frag and armor piercing high explosive shells that I got shot at, a uh, shot with, in the broadsword battleship battles. If you have seen the latest installment, you are you do know what I'm talking about. Oh god, I totally missed that. We didn't like. I hate when I do work and I forget to mirror it. It's just so. In any case, if you've seen those battle, you kind of know that um, they're very strong, and there are times when they just instantly kill me. Uh, too late, spoiler alert! But check check the battles out, and you'll see. So I'm thinking that I am. I think I have to have some armor-piercing EMP armor piercing frag or armor piercing high explosive as kind of the main weapon on this thing. I should have one of the main weapons be that to be honest. Um, but I'm not really sure how, how I will set up the shell. This 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 is just a sabot armor piercing thing. Um, and if you, we combine sabot with uh, if we combine the sabots with the explosives, they get really weak, so it's not really a good idea, I feel like. But I don't know. Um, I wonder what this stuff if we do it a hollow point instead. Okay, here we go. That's kind of depressing. Not good. Anyways, I've set up engines. Here we have auxiliary, um, what are they called, like uh, injector roses. And you can see these are by no means efficient, but I think, all right, we need to get rid of that. Stable power. I think they go up to more than 2000 power, to be honest. Or do I not remember correctly? Anyways, they're good. They're just some auxiliary power. Uh, I'll have more efficient power. Uh, down here, for example, I have a three-stage engine with both uh, the supercharger part, uh, which is lower priority, the turbo charger part and a tiny injector part if need be. And these are also set up to be uh, kind of ish auxiliary engines. I'll of course have a main engine that can just take the standby mood, but I also want several auxiliaries all over the place just because we do not want to get out of power. Uh, here I made a little sloping thing here. This is more to kind of look cool, but also to kind of explode uh, torpedoes and stuff a little bit away from the main uh, hull inside of here. And the hull down here isn't super thick, and that is because the AI core by itself is like heavily armored anyways. Um, so I felt it wasn't necessary. Right, and I just realized kind of that I forgot to mirror when I was building a little bit. Yeah, it seems like it looks good now. I think it looks good now. Okay. That's fine. Anyways, um, and Borderwise kindly told me that the ammo storage does not work as any kind of uh, uh, stopping power for... Uh, it doesn't work as ERA in any way. But I have ERA on the outside here anyway, so it shouldn't matter too much. In any case, uh, it is completely fine that, you know, these areas kind of explode. Poof! You can see if something would explode at ammo box. It what the f uh, 
it didn't do that when I tested it lastly. Um, it doesn't reach now, but it's it's doing a little bit too much damage, man. Is it different from side to side? What? It kind of is. You know, I think I'm gonna move the ammo. We'll probably have some other important stuff there in those compartments. I can probably have the ammo out here. Um, maybe. Where I can spread it out like we normally do. Having a little bit here and there. Anyways, that was interesting to know. Um, I don't know if it was the explosion I was using. But it's not very big. It's just 10,000 damage. Where is it? 100,000? 10,000. Yeah, so that's basically how the battleship is coming along. I need to learn how to use uh, lasers better because I intend to have laser systems on this and maybe not so much lambs like that. Maybe more like damage lasers. And yeah, I need to tinker with that a little bit. But I'm, I'm, I'm liking the design of this thing so far. I think it looks cool. And as you might understand, it won't be a super low profile ship. I don't imagine it being like that. I imagine it being like a big bulk ship with an armored core in the middle with some important, more important system. So what we see now is basically the fringes of this cannon. And I'm just so happy with this turret design. I think it looks really cool. But any case, um, this is not all that will be. I intend to have a kind of cool looking superstructure on this thing. And I want it to have more smaller turrets. I'm thinking about having like this turret. If I can find a shell that's actually good, I want to have this turret um, a little bit here and there to deal some damage uh, that we can spread out. Because this is frankly a cheap weapon. This is... It's 3000. It's it's a really good one. Uh, if you compare that to some of the simple weapons, it's like, okay, that was 3000. It's like cheaper than one of these. And I don't think it makes any sense to have one of these on there. It's basically like one of these. <laughs> and I cannot promise it's better than one of these, but... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe we can try that out, actually. Maybe I don't want to try that out. Maybe it's much better. I never understand that menu. I don't know how it works. It's like you click it several times <clears throat> and it kind of works. But it absolutely does not make any sense. I have to say that. Come on. Okay, I'm very happy. <clears throat> um, this gun is more suckier, I think. In terms of... Uh, do we have stats, by the way? Like DPS somewhere. Firepower. I don't know. Maybe like... Far... Full... Uh, may maybe... Um, materials per firepower. So, I guess a few materials... Uh, I think d uh, materials per firepower. Firepower should be high, so this should be a low number as possible, I suppose. If we go inside of there... Uh, in that case, this gun is better. I don't know if... I don't know if that says anything. <clears throat> But anyways, I'll need to build more on this thing. Um, I felt like I spent a lot of time on, on like uh, putting out the armor here and in implementing missiles, systems and defenses and like that. I don't know if it looks like I've done much, but I think we're in a good way. And of course the hull is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit thin, it's just one sheet of metal right now. So we're gonna thicken that up, and I'm thinking that we'll have a layer of stone. So we kinda can reduce some EMP. 
And then we can have a layer of metal on top of that probably uh, with some EMP surge protectors to kind of insulate it a little bit. But we are firstly needing to decide what we're going to have where. I'm thinking that perhaps this is an area for some engine. Uh, I'm still debating whether we should have steam engine propulsion or not. Because I kind of want to use the these ones. Large steam. Because it's cool. Super cool. Yeah, well, any case. Um, this can't do super much right now. It's uh, it's only 600,000 in terms of materials. But I think we can spawn a crossbones. Which is like a third of the cost. And maybe we can deal some damage. <laughs> oh well. So we can see what happens. <clears throat> I just want to make sure I didn't select any of the weapons. See, we shot down a few of those cram shells. And of course, crams do a lot of damage to this outer side. And uh, it's not here to sustain, to be honest. Remember that. Ooh! Here we have... Oh <laughs> no! The main torpedo missed. No, no, it's coming in here. It's coming in. Okay. No! No! Come on! It's remote guided. It's remote guided. I think it kind of... Uh, our AI can't support it very well. Oh no. Now it's started drifting like that, not good. Okay. So there we have some cluster torpedoes going on there. And now it hits. Good thing. Anyways, um, these cramps don't do a lot of damage, but against these targets they're kinda decent. And I'm wondering if our EMPs will start hitting here again soonish. It looks like we nuked something, did we? Anyways, I think those uh, missile system does a good job. This is a uh, shape charge, by the way, so it should deal some good damage against the underside of hulls and stuff. Ugh. <laughs> I didn't set up the crams, uh, the mortars, on a delay or something like that. I don't know, I should probably have a delay or something. Uh, they, use the, they use suppressor barrels and uh, recoil absorption barrels, uh, so they kind of... yeah. I, I hope they will be a little bit harder to detect. God, whoa. Damn. Boom. That's a lot of damage. Well, that's uh, what we're doing here. And uh, we can see how much damage did we take. The first turret wall is actually not destroyed. That's good. These ones as well not. This cannon is sad, but here you can see it was probably smart to have a little bit of internal heavy armor on there because it's alive. Yeah. And our, of course, our repair bots have repaired a lot of stuff. Uh, that shouldn't be underestimated. Anyways, I guess that's that. Um, I think that this will be enough for this little battlefield, uh, battleship diary thing. No, it's not a battleship diary. It was because I watched um, Borderwise's latest battleship diary. Uh, I'm not trying to steal his name <laughs> for this series. Because this is building a battleship. 
and we're shorting it as BAB as you can see on the thumbnails I even have a, thumb, a template and stuff like that uh, so this is it for this building a battleship um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make something that kind of works and kind of is good and yes I will not rely solely on crams for this crams are auxiliary systems in this thing because they're dealing a lot of damage for a low cost and that's amazing and if I can make my crams keep the uh, lambs busy or anti-missile missiles, anti-cram missiles and stuff like that um, and make some other stuff do damage instead, that's good enough. It's like a... yeah. It's good, it's good to spam a little bit as well. In any case, hope you enjoyed this little video and if you did, please leave a like and do stay tuned for future installments. And now I will remember to do something that I almost never <coughs> um, remember to do. And I'm very sorry about that. And that's of course thanking our supporters. We have our YouTube channel members, Fernando Parde... <coughs> I need to, I need to uh, find my Spanish here a little bit. Our YouTube members, Fernando Paves Yantern, yes. Uh, Yudishra Arcana, Derrida Klaskin, Halofo, and Nicole Winters. And also huge thanks to our patrons, Ejin and Marty McBacon. So, uh, thanks for that support, and thanks everyone for watching. I'll be seeing you next time. This is Jim Odesim, signing out.